a well-told story should feel almost like a roller coaster ride? Yeah, I, I believe that. I think that a well-told story has ups and downs and it has twists and turns and it surprises and delights you and terrifies you. Um, I think that a really well-told story should have that variety of emotions. Uh, and I think that when you think about some of your favorite movies and books and experiences, they really take you on that journey from beginning, middle, and end. Um, they take you on a journey where you truly let yourself go, you are present, you suspend your disbelief, and you trust that the storyteller and creator is gonna take you on this magical journey. And it's not just about the thrills and the screams and the excitement, but it's about that anticipation. You think about a roller coaster from the moment that you're lining up to get on the vehicle itself, your heart is beating, you're excited talking to your family and your friends, um, you're trying to, you know, you're so pumped up and excited to go on this adventure. And even when you climb into the vehicle and you have your safety on you and everything, going off of that ramp and, you know, when you start chugging up the track, it's, you're not thinking about anything else. You know, you're thinking about, oh my gosh, I'm just going to go on this really fast ride and there's nothing I can do. I'm out of control, right? I have to trust that this coaster is going to take me back safely to where I started. But for those few moments, you really let yourself go and be present and just enjoy the ride. Um, and I feel like well-told stories do that, right? You trust that you're going to be taken to some extraordinary place to go on your hero's journey if you will, and really depart on this and embark on this adventure where you have this excitement and this anticipation and you go on a thrilling, you know, twists and turns and ups and downs and all kinds of things that you don't have control over. And you're surprised by how not only, you know, you survive in the end that you had a great time, but it's this feeling of, I think this, this, this release of control that is extremely, perhaps very exciting for a lot of people because all your life, um, for the most part, you have to really think about what you're doing and planning and, you know, it's a checklist of things to do and accomplish and all of these things. And sometimes it just feels good to let someone else take control for a little bit and take you on this really great journey. And that's why I think a lot of people come back to like theme parks and amusement parks and everything, because it's a way for you to truly, um, you know, let yourself play and release yourself from all these inhibitions and um, engage in something that feels extraordinary, that is not, is out of the ordinary life that you live and being able to transport yourself to this playful, um, you know, playground of sorts where you can really go on an adventure is something that um, a well-told story does. And the, the beauty of it is it's not thrill every minute. There, mm -hmm. There's peaks and valleys to yes. it. And yeah. And there are a lot of peaks and valleys in well-told stories. I mean, you know, well-told stories make you cry as much as you laugh, right? Um, they touch you, they, you know, some stories can be extremely tragic, but uh, there's a glimmer of hope in the end. Um, so all of these emotions of positive and negative emotions, and neither, are, you know, they're not good or bad, they're just the scale of emotions, the spectrum of emotions that we as human beings experience. Um, and so when I think about, you know, Going on a roller coaster, um, it's really, uh, you know, a metaphor to the the life of, um, you know, the journey of a well-told story in which there are these peaks and valleys and there are ups and downs and all of them are okay. 
You know, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel to feel scared and terrified because that is the human experience. Um, and I think that if you know you live your life wanting to experience uh, the peak all the time, then you haven't truly lived. You haven't you know experienced all that life has to offer for you. And that's why really great stories take you there and make you really reflect on um, you know, all the various emotions that you can experience in your life and how you can reflect upon it um, in your own life with, a, with your own family and friends and how you can um, experience this colorful spectrum that is life. Where does the creative process begin for an immersive story? The creative process begins with a lot of research. That's something that I think everyone should always do as a step one. If you are uh, going to tell a story, especially a story that's not yours to own, um, I think that really understanding the subject matter, um, talking to experts and having the appropriate subject matter experts and advisors to help you truly understand a topic and a world is extremely important. I think that if you jump into um, the creative process without understanding the context, the significance, you know, what's important about that particular story is, uh, can be very problematic. So I always, want to find um, mul multiple perspectives on a particular subject matter or topic or world, whatever it is, to truly understand, especially if it's nonfiction, especially if it's something biographical, especially if it's historical or educational, even if it's not, even if it's a fictional world, um, you have to respect uh, the subject matter and the story. So I think that research is um, number one, the first step that you must take as a storyteller to any project that you work on. Can you talk about the brainstorming process? You know, there's so many different ways to brainstorm an idea, but I think as a creative process and as creatives and creative collaborators, it's a really great way to all be together in a room when you brainstorm an idea. And it, depending on the scope of your project and the kind of project that you have, you may bring in some different disciplines to really think about your world through their various um, skill set. So you might have um, an illustrator or an architect or a writer or a creative director or a landscape designer. It really depends on the subject matter that you're working with. But ultimately, you want to have all these uh, various representatives, if you will, of all these creative di disciplines come together so that you're able to create something that is uh, seamless and integrated. Because you're using multiple senses to experience uh, an immersive story, you want to make sure that all of these voices are present in the room, at the table, um, cultural experts, um, story, uh, you know, subject matter experts, all of these things. It's a way for you to really throw out all the ideas and brainstorm all the good and bad ideas together so that you can really understand what's important about the story you want to share with the world. And hearing it from all these different disciplines and from different people and voices is extremely important to make sure that you have a very diverse and representative uh, uh, representation of uh, a story that is truly unique and authentic. And on the flip side, though, let's take an example of like you know the the quote "too many cooks spoil mm -hmm. the broth." Mm -hmm. So if we have too many people, how does it dilute it? I mean, when do you know? I think I have a good mix. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really, uh, it's a good question. And I think that a lot of times um, we, you want to, it really depends on what we're talking about because 
There are certain instances where you feel like you really want to focus on an idea or a topic and really brainstorm from that idea. But sometimes I think that it's good to start out, it's good to start out bigger in some sense and maybe you narrow it down from there. Um, I think that it's important to have uh, important voices heard in the beginning because that really shapes how you create that story um, throughout the life cycle of a project. And it really gives, you you know, as the creator, a storyteller, you want to, at least for me personally, I want to hear everyone's ideas. And as the story champion, as the person who's going to create this story, I want to make sure that all the voices within that within the team are heard first and foremost. And in a way, my job is to be a curator, to decide which of these um, perspectives are the ones that we really want to focus on, which are the ones that are important but may not take the spotlight in this particular point in time. Um, what are the ones? What are the ways that we can tell a story? that's not so um, you know, uh, overt, I guess. Can we tell stories in ways that are more um, contextual and more suggestive rather than something that is very um, obvious? So I know that seems very like strange to think about because surely like with all the voices in my head, it would be confusing or distracting perhaps. But I think it depends. But for me, I really want to hear it all. It's kind of like a funnel if you, you know, for lack of a better analogy, I want to hear it all. I want to hear all the different perspectives and from there really be able to hone in and focus on what's really important. What are the common themes? What are the common patterns? What are the common things people are saying that have a a unified, a more unified um, approach? to how we can tell that story. So ultimately, once you know you have all the voices heard and you hear all the different perspectives, you can have smaller groups and breakout sessions to consider, okay, now that we have this greater idea, this big idea concept of what our project is about, now let's um, we can go into smaller groups of like, how do we tell that story in this particular room? How do we tell that story in the dining experience? How do we tell that story in the retail experience, right? So in that sense, you can have more focused groups to think about it. But, you know, as a storyteller, you you kind of have to do both. You have, you're a generalist and you're also a specialist when it comes time for it. Um, you really have to think about how you can use all of these different um, stories, ideas, perspectives, in uh, a much bigger arching uh, story uh, story arc, and then find ways in which you can be more defined and focus in different elements of your entire experience. So there's different ways that you can do that, but I think that it really depends on how much time you have, you know, uh, how much money you have, frankly, for the project as well, and really think about how best to approach it in the most efficient and uh, effective way.